Welcome to the first real programming task now. So in the last lessons you learned everything what you need for the programming in MATLAB. We started with the interactive modes, we did then the uh, programming style so that we used an editor to write own sequences of comments with if else construction with while loops and for loops and things like that and now we start to really use this stuff for a project for the project to read data from the traffic engineering sector so um, therefore you got different tasks uh, which you found uh, in the Moodle uh, of the course and we now want to do this so again if you start programming then you have to do the programming so therefore um, I hope you did your own things and I know that this is in most cases like jumping into cold water so I had to do this several times uh, because of learning of C, C++ um, and Python and whatever if you're able to do programming with one special language it's easy to jump to another but it's always a situation where you will reach a point which cannot be solved with your current knowledge and then you have to sit down and have to do the job what you exactly do at the moment as well and the first thing is search the internet search in our case the MATLAB help pages and then you will find a lot of things which helps you to do the job uh, which is defined in the tasks um, so the first task is the following write a script to read the xls files which you find here for a download um, so that it can be directly read with matlab okay we have not heard about this in the lesson and therefore we search the internet and then you will find two possibilities the first one is the simplest one i would say which is xls read and then you find another one which is read table so let, let's directly start with this first simple solution and at the end if we finished all of the tasks I will show you the read table version because there you have to learn a little bit more about programming if you have XLS read then you just enter the name of the uh, file in our case, it's named group01.xls. And if we do this, then it automatically reads the complete file and it returns just the numbers. So if we watch the original uh, file, then you see that there are some headlines which are text information and these headlines are skipped and only the numbers are read so therefore we are already in a very very good condition because if you watch this you directly have the numbers and you can directly plot the data if you enter plot and then we select answer so answer all rows and the second column and if we don't enter an additional value here, then it plots the data over a continuous um, vector counting from one to the maximum number of values. So we will directly get a plot of the raw data from these values. And you see, this is the first sensor which we have. And these are all raw data uh, speed informations which we got so this is quite nice two commands and everything is finished um, so let's pack it into a script um, which directly helps us to improve the um, data manipulation and data work first of all we do the clear all and close all and CLC as in each script and then we want to note down 
which script is started. So if we call different in the future, then you directly get the steps which we do. And then we do this XLS read. So we copy it from here. So this is the reading, but we have to store the data somewhere. So in my case, I would store it in none data. And if you watch XLS read in the ed, uh, help pages, then you will see that it returns three different values or three different matrices. The first one is the matrix with the numbers. A second one is a matrix which contains just text data. And the third one is a matrix which contains the table from Excel like it is. The big difference here is now that the different matrices are not normal MATLAB mathematical matrices because if you remember matrices must have always the correct dimensions and if you have text values inside text is used as a vector and therefore the different sizes will not fit into a normal regular matrix and therefore there's a special matrix used which is called a cell matrix so let's have a look at it i just start this script which is saved in ts read step by step and then we read the data and you will see that we have now the raw data available and the raw data contain now the text and numbers as a mixture the big difference is now that you have to select the different values with a different um, yeah structure if you remember in a normal matrix you make data parenthesis open parenthesis close and you go to the fourth line and the second column and if you do this then you will get the cell the cell contains here a scalar a single value so it's a vector in this case a one cross one matrix and you see it's the cell and if you really want the value inside here then you have to use instead of this parenthesis the curly braces this is the only difference so that you now get the real value which can directly be used for example if we add um, 5 to this value then you directly get the result 106 in this case so you can directly work with it because uh, the values are the real num numeric values um, but they are stored in so-called cells which can contain any type so also combined types like character sequences or character strings in our case we focus on the num data at this point of uh, processing um, later on in the future we will also use the text data so that we get the real um, information from the sensors so sensor names for example but uh, at this point it is enough if we focus on the num data here what we can do at this point it would be finished but what we can do is we can prepare the data so that for a future step it is easier and we don't have to always use the whole matrix stuff here which contains the mixture of all values which we don't use at the moment and therefore we prepare this the matrix which is called speed matrix where we just take the data which are relevant for speed information and this is easy to be done because you already know what we need so we name it speed we create a new matrix we name it speed and we select data from the num data and we want all rows because we always have in the columns the whole information for one sensor and then we start at the second column here the uh, speed informations dq and we want each eight column because if you check this on the next uh, eighth position we have the next speed vector 
and on again on next eight column we have the next and so on and therefore we select two colon eight colon end and we have everything what we need and then if you check the project description you will see that the Sensor 69 is on the forest distance from Munich. Therefore, we have to flip it in a way that the sensor with the smallest number, which is also the sensor closest to Munich, is the first one. And therefore, we just flip the data. You remember, flip left, right from the theory lesson. And then we have the sensor in the right order. And just for beautification, if we do a transpose, then we have in each row the information for one sensor so that the rows are now the sensor numbers or sensors and in the columns we have the speed values for each sensor. So it's a little bit uh, nicer uh, because usually you read it row by row. What else can we do to prepare future steps? You always should think about what might be necessary for the future scripts, for the future programs. And therefore, often we want to have the dimensions and therefore you can prepare the dimension and can directly name it um, for which the dimension stands for. So for example, first of all, we do the complete dimension of the whole matrix. So in this case, size of speed matrix is equal size of speed. Speed is the matrix and the size will uh, have the number of sensors and the number of single values. So therefore the number of sensors can be easily derived because we use size in the first dimension because we flipped it and then we transposed it and this transposed value orders it that we have the sensors line by line and therefore the first dimension is the number of sensors. So we'll get here 19 sensors and then the number of time slots is in the second dimension because the values are arranged in the columns and therefore we will have the number of time slots which are per minute. So each column is the next minute. Um, so therefore we have the number of time slots in the second dimension. And if we want, without having the information here from the first column where the real time is stored, we can directly prepare time information. It's not the best way to do it in this way because it's something like uh, an assumption that we will have a continuous set of values. So if we will have uh, a break in between the data so that we lost one hour for example in the complete set of data then it means that we will he have your accounting error but if you do the following step we can calculate the time we start with minute zero then each new column each new value will be the next minute so we add one as an uh, iterator and then we'll stop in number of time slots minus one because the last minute for which we have data is not 1440 uh, which is the complete uh, number of minutes per one day um, the last number if we start with zero will be 1439 and with this if we run it we prepare everything what we need for the plotting for the later plotting we have all of the data available and we prepare the script which has about 20 lines of code which reads the data and prepares everything for a future plot. With this we solve the first task. So let's go directly to the next task which is write a script to read a simplified text table. So uh, we have to find a way to convert the data from Excel to a text version. And in this case, we do the following so that we uh, prepare a text file from the data 
which we use in Excel. And Excel can directly save text versions of the tables. And these text versions are the complete table and each column is separated with a special delimiter. And in our case, I would suggest that we use a tab separated um, organization. So we store the data or the file as a text file and we use a delimiter, which is a tab letter or tab sign. And if you watch this then, then you will have directly a matrix which can be read, uh, which can be read, sorry, um, with the standard MATLAB functions which you already know. Save and load. Load is this function which can be used to read the data. So therefore, let's store the information in a way which can be used for these simple MATLAB functions. If we watch the Excel tables, then again we have this text information here. And this text information is a problem because it would destroy our dimension um, situation because the text, as already explained, is a vector and if different vectors do not fit into the matrix dimensions, then we'll get a problem. Therefore, uh, remember the cell matrix. As we use save and load, we have to avoid this. And therefore, we delete these first two lines. And then we can store it as a tabulator separated file. So we go to save. And then we select a position. For example, here in MATLAB. And we select that we want a text file. And in our case, a tabulator separated text file. So you can have this here, a white space separated file, or you can have the tabulator separated file. And then if you store this, you will have it in a way which you can directly read. So there's one additional small problem which you will find if we read the data now from this file. And the problem just appears in languages where the comma is used for the floating point arithmetic. For the floating point we use commas in Germany. But do you remember what a comma in a matrix means? If you create a matrix, the comma means you have a separation between the columns and therefore it will lead into problems. If you load the matrix in this way, so we use the file name which we uh, define for storing the data and then we define that it is ASCII text. And if you load it in this way, then you will see that ANS or that in this case group 01 contains the data in a usable way. But if you watch the differences, then you will see that num data um, has less numbers of columns than the group 01. Because watch at this column 5. If you compare this, then you will see that here the data are split. So 2 and 81 are split here. So therefore you have um, a difference in the data values because if you watch the German Excel here then you will see a comma here and the comma is read by MATLAB like it is a separator and therefore you have to take care on how you select the speed data from these values. But the rest is quite simple. So instead of writing the XLS read, instead of this, we just use this load. And this load directly reads the data into our matrix. So we use raw data again, which contains the raw data. And this raw data uh, is then uh, split again into the real 
data which we need for the speed information but take care on this because now it depends on which version you have so which version of the excel file you have is it a german excel file generation or is it an, a normal um, american style uh, generation then you have here a different um, iterator so the only thing what I have to change now is that I have to do another selection mechanism here. And instead of this, I write now this. I use raw data and I go to each ninth column. Because we do not use the data which are incorrectly separated, I just use the um, speed values and therefore I can do this. And the rest is exactly the same. So the big difference is we have a separation here between the different um, reading mechanisms and we have a separation between the different preparations. But the rest, so if everything what we need for the future is created here, the rest is very similar or the same. So if we let the program run then you will see that it reads a speed matrix which is exactly the same what you got before so let's go back to the original version because now we want to store the data from the text reading so that it is similar to what we get in the converted text file. This is task number three. So store raw data from task one as text file equivalent to converted text file from task two. So let's clean up our MATLAB environment first. So we delete this here, we do CLC, clear all, close all, and then we, we run this program again. And then we want to store it. So in this case, um, I want to store it as an American style version of this text file. Um, and this can be done quite easily because if we have the num data available, you already know a function which will store the information in a text file. It's the function save. So we do save and then we give the name of the text file. In our case, let's name it group 01. MATLAB generated.txt and then we want to store our uh, num data just the data which really contains numbers and then we want to store it as text file ASCII and if you want you can directly say that it should be double uh, type and if you do this then you store the data as text file and the file looks like this now so all of the numbers are stored in a double um, precision version so that's task three as well and now let's plot the data so if we have the data available, we can directly plot it. You already saw the plotting, um, which is quite simple. Um, but we want to do it with a new script. So therefore, let's create a new empty script. And let's store it as plot step by step. And then we can do exactly the same what we always do. So you can directly call plot without this cleaning 
or you always read the data freshly into the memory so you just call the script which you prepared pre before in our case it's ts xls read step by step so we name it step by step and what does this do it calls our program which then reads the data so it's the the script which we wrote here so it's ts read step by step dot m so this program will now be called if we call the program ts plot step by step and again we want to write down what we do here so we plot the data into figure one and therefore we have to do the plotting We want to plot all of the sensors and therefore we do a counter from the number of sensors, from one to number of sensors. So it's a loop now, which we use to run through all of the sensors. And then what do we do? We create a subplot. And we create a subplot in that way that we will have a five cross four matrix for the plots and we'll have the selection which one is now plotted by the plot count and everything what we now have to do is nothing more than we write plot the x-axis is the time which we created here at the end of our uh, previous script and where we use speed Plot count is the sele selection of the sensor. So the sensors are in our lines of the matrix, of the speed matrix. And then we select all data for the individual sensor. So we select the sensor with plot count. And with this, we prepare a subplot, which creates the raw data output as a nice graph. So let's do this and start the program. So it reads the data with XLS read in, in our case, and then it plots the data so that we get 19 different plots in one graph, which shows the different raw data of the different sensors. These are the tasks which we have to do. So the rest is just beautification. So for example, we can do an X label. So let's do this here. Time minutes. And a Y label. Speed in kilometers per hour and if you run it again then you will see that each subplot will have these labels so with this we finished all our tasks. But do you remember, I mentioned another version uh, which can be used to read the data. And this other version is read table. And if you found this, then you might came into a situation where we had to learn a lot of new things. Because MATLAB not only offers a version which is a matrix or a cell matrix it also uh, offers a version which is a matrix called table and the table has named columns and if you do read table you can read all text files or whatever uh, structure uh, it has um, with a with a version so that you can create such a table and in this table you have a special structure um, which uses in our case cell matrices in combination with these tables and therefore you have to do a lot of more work 
to prepare the data. And finalization, I want to show you this as well, because if you have a Mac operating system, then often the XLS read did not work so well, and therefore uh, a more open, a more um, general version is this version, which uses the table reading mechanism. So let's have a look into this. So, let's clean up everything and let's first of all have a look what the read table does. So, if we do a read table, it can directly be used in the same way like XLS read. We assign the return value or the returned values to a new matrix. And if we run this, then we will get a matrix which is in the structure of a table. So if you open this matrix, then you will see that it is now the complete Excel file, like it was. It looks very similar to what we saw in the um, raw data table of XLS read, but there is a difference if you watch the naming here in the columns, you have now additional names and therefore it identifies that it is a table. So a table means it is a structure which looks like a matrix but, but each column has an additional name. And another difference is if you go to the end of the matrix you see that empty um, areas which were not used in the Excel file are now named with not a number. So not a number characterizes that there are data or that there are no data. And therefore a first step what we have to do is we have to delete things where we have no data and um, table offers us a nice possibility which is remove missing. So again you need a new function and therefore I said it's a little bit more complex than what you know. So but it's the same style what we use all the all the time we search for functions MATLAB already offers. If not we have to write the functions for our own or the, the scripts and then we do this. So delete all columns with missing data and it is like this. So we reassign the result to the existing table and what we do is we delete all missing data columns and therefore we go into the second dimension is similar to size what we what this function needs and therefore we use remove missing from raw data table and in the dimension of the columns. So if we do this you will see that now all not number not the number um, columns disappear now. So you see it's quite simple, but you have to know what you do. And this is the difficult. And then we do exactly the same what you already know. So we do a selection with the difference that we have now this curly braces. So if you want to access the data, it's a, again a cell matrix. It must be again a cell matrix, a special version of this cell matrix, because we have a mixture of characters and numbers. In this case, the reading from uh, Excel file produces a lot of character sequences uh, so that every position here, every element is a character string. And therefore, if we want to access it, we now take the cells from this table and we create a new cell matrix which contains just the raw data or the, the uh, character strings for the speed values. The selectors here are exactly the same. The only difference is that we start from a second uh, row because the first one is the information or the headline uh, part. So if we do this, we create a cell matrix 
which we can open and then we have a cell matrix in the same style like the num data and then we have to convert this num data which are in this case strings so it's not really num data it's a, a, a um, matrix with con which contains characters with the num data we have to convert it now to a version of real num data so therefore what we do is we create first of all a matrix with the same size of the cell matrix so we create a matrix with zeros of the dimension of rows and of the dimension of columns and we then copy the whole stuff here in a converted version to this real value or number or numeric value matrix so and therefore we have to go through all of the columns and all of the lines so let's start with the lines you should have already tested this in the last um, classes because it's exactly the same what we did we run through two dimensions of a matrix so we, we prepare a counter or an index counter row counter which starts from one to size of speed cell matrix in this case of the first dimension and then we create a second version of a for loop which counts the columns so again the same style call counter from one to speed size second dimension and the only thing what we do is now we copy into this matrix so therefore we have to assign it to this matrix speed row count call count so first dimension second dimension equal and then we would do this here so we want to take the data from speed cell matrix row count call count so first dimension second dimension with a curly brace so that we get the cell but the problem is now that if we do this we get text because all of the number values or all of the num data here are not yet in real numeric values and therefore we have to find a version to convert number or strings to numbers and MATLAB offers this as a function again so therefore we have to use here the function string to num which converts the data and then we do end end and if we do this we create now a speed matrix which has the same size but now the big difference is that speed contains the values as real numbers and speed cell matrix contains the values as cells with characters so if I switch between this you see it jumps in the order and it also shows here the cell you see there is the only difference that we have now real real numbers and the rest is exactly the same so let's go back to our script which we have and then we just replace this part here with the which must be now of what we have entered here in interactive mode and this is the big advantage in MATLAB you can do it directly interactively and then you just copy the things into your program script so therefore we now read the data with a new script which we created so we don't need this, this selection mechanism and therefore we do a new reading so everything what we entered in the interactive mode here we copy now into this script so we read the table with read table we remove the missing parts so the not the numbers not a number parts then we uh, select the values which contain speed information and then we convert it from text to 
numbers and then you do the rest exactly like we already did and then we can use this and can run it so if we do this it now reads the excel files with the table version So that's it and you can use all three methods. All of them have advantages and disadvantages of course. Um, you will see later on which uh, advantages and disadvantages they have. In best case you prepare everything in a way that you can use it later on so that after the run of the script you have always the same situation um, and that you have always the same style uh, of matrix naming so that's it for today um, for the next lesson you'll have to do additional jobs so let's have a look what we can do for the next week so for next week we can think about how to do a real timing, for example, and how to use real sensor names and how to optimize the plots. So therefore we want to use real sensor names in the titles of the plots so that we have titles in our subplots and they use the real sensor names. Then we want to use uh, max and min speed limits and those are limits for the X axis so that the plots always have the same uh, maximum minimum values and that they can be compared between each other. Um, we can also have a real timing so that we use the timing um, from the information which we read in or that we create it if we don't have it available. And then we can do the aggregation. So therefore check the project description and then check what we want to do so we want to make this step function here so that we always have 15 minutes of mean values and this mean value is valid for the whole 15 minutes so that we smooth our raw data to get the information of a general behavior at this sensor so these are the tasks for next week and therefore have a lot of fun and we'll see each other next time. Mm -hmm.